Hey everyone, this is the third video in my Farming Simulator tutorial slash let's play. Uh, we finally got the harvest. We can go ahead and con collect all the canola we've been farming for the last two videos and uh, put all that in the silo. You can already see that I've got uh, 19,020 liters of it and we still have my biggest field yet which is uh, this field number 12. Um, we're going to do a lot of number crunching today to see where uh, where we can tighten up, uh, what uh, what what harvesting in the future is going to look like, and whether or not this is even possible uh, or sustainable, I should say. So I'm going to go ahead and harvest this field over here, and uh, we'll catch up when when I've got it all in the silo and count it up, and then we're going to go sell it and see how we've done. All right, so we're finally done with the harvest. We're uh, about to put the last little batch in our trailer, take it over to the silo, and uh, we'll be able to see how much we actually made from everything, uh, how many, uh, how big our yield was, and whether or not um, it was worth it doing things like buying uh, fertilizer or uh, hiring workers, um, buying all that equipment so early in the game. Uh, we'll be able to crunch all those numbers, see where our, our farm stands in, in terms of uh, profits, and, uh, and see if we're, we're going to be sustainable or not. So as soon as this guy's done, we're going to put his pipe back in, switch over to the uh, pickup truck. Now let's head over to the silo and see how big our yield was in, in liters. And we'll jot that down and make sure that we remember that for when we do the... Uh, the wheat or barley so that we can see if indeed the 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 yield for those plants are greater than the yield of the canola and the um, and soybeans so um, I'd, I'd really like to see them be about double or at least um, at least almost double so that the the price um, that we see on this screen over here being as low as it is uh, makes up for the amount of yield that you get from them so as you can see, and we're going to want to write this down, this is uh, 41,020 liters. I'll have that saved for next time, uh, our next harvest when we do one of these. And uh, it looks like the best bang for our buck is going to be Maplefield uh, Mill. And that's a good sign because I want to ride the train. So uh, I will, uh, I'm going to lock this down, put, my, uh, put, uh, put as much grain as I can into my uh, trailer, and I'll see you guys at the train. Well, I'm pretty excited. I finally get to use the train. I don't know why that excites me so much, but we're gonna go ahead and load up uh, one full thing of uh, one full load of canola into our trailer, and then we're gonna head off and uh, let's see how we run this train. Uh, I've done it once or twice before. Um, it's really simple. You basically, uh, with the equipment that you're given, you can just take the uh, the trailer that you have and fill it into the silo. Uh, that's at the train station then you've just got to move the train up a little bit and uh, and fill everything into the correct car that uh, that can hold this uh, the trains come equipped to be able to hold uh, logs and, and a whole bunch of other stuff so uh, you just have to move it up into the right spot and it's super simple I'll show you guys how to do that right now so here we are approaching the um, train station we're gonna fill all of this Let's see, that goes not in there. Uh, put it in here. And once we're in place, we can just unload right there. And I'll go ahead and fill up a little bit on the train just so you guys can see it. But it's a really simple process. Um, let's get out of the car and head over here. So there are two trains uh, running on two different tracks. The tracks that, uh, or the train that goes to where we want to go is, uh, is actually, and I'm gonna have to run all the way around this thing, uh, it's actually on this second train over here. So what we want to do is go ahead and get into the train and move it up. As you can see right there, the pipe that's coming down right above the train, that's, uh, that's what's used to fill from the silo. Um, so let's turn this guy on, and remember he's uh, he's tough to break. So you've got to start breaking early. Um, once we're about in place to where it says start filling, then our train's in the right spot. 
And then we just hit the button to fill the canola and he'll just drop it in there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start start trucking all my uh, all my canola over to the silo. When I'm done with that, we'll get in the train with a full load and uh, we'll take it over to the um, to the mill and sell it and we'll see what we get. Okay, so we're approaching the train station with the last little load of canola that I have. We're going to dump this in there, uh, fill up the train, and then we're going to drive to Maplefield Mill, unload everything there, and see how much money we make. And uh, I'm pretty excited because this is like the moment of truth uh, on whether or not we've run a good farm uh, for this harvest at least. So let's get over to the train, uh, hop in there, and uh, let's, uh, let's drive this thing like a boss. Um, I'm really excited about the addition to the train because it's something that was definitely not needed. Um, it doesn't really add too much to the game in terms of uh, in terms of gameplay. Um, it doesn't change your your farming or anything. It's just uh, a way to deliver goods. Um, but I'm really excited that they put it in there because why not? You know. So uh, looking at the bottom right, looks like uh, it's going to fill up rather rapidly, and uh, and it's not going to even it's not going to even be. Uh, half of what one of these carts can carry so that's kind of nice it, it allows us to really fill these guys up once uh, once we get moving with a lot a lot more product um, because that was that was five or six different uh, different trips in my car so we're gonna we're gonna make sure that we break early when we get here let me pull up the map uh, it's right on the other side of the lake from where the train station where we started was at so we want to make sure that we start breaking early and we don't pass it up. That is, uh, that's the easiest thing to do on this train. So let's go ahead and start uh, or stop cruise control and start breaking now. And here we go. This is Maplefield Mill. Mill. I think we're gonna make it. Maybe, maybe we might still pass it up. Nope, just perfect. So let's unload and uh, let's see how much money we make. Look on the upper right, looks like we did okay. 34,361 harvest income. Let's look at our finance screen. And yep, 34,361. So that's really good. That was, uh, that was quite a profit. Um, and remember, this is only with a 90% increase in our harvest. So, um, so with another 10%, we could have gotten a little bit more. And uh, I'll show you guys how to do the math on, on what we're actually making with the 30% increase on fertilizer and 10% increase we would have gotten on the, with a plow. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and put all of these numbers into a format that's a little easier to read so we can look at where we're actually at on our farm uh, in terms of uh, what it costs to make this much money and uh, whether or not we can tighten up somewhere and um, finally do projections for our next harvest and see what we'll make there. So let me get all that typed up and uh, we'll go through that. Hey guys and welcome back. Uh, I've got my uh, all this information that was on the side over here I've got that put into a little document here that makes it a little easier to read and uh, and understand in terms of a profit and loss statement um, this is very typical and very simplified version of what you would see uh, at the end of each month or each quarter in a typical business. So I wanted to go through uh, what everything was and uh, how I ended up with this number down here and what these percentages mean and uh, what I can do to use this information uh, to, to kind of try to, try to tighten up my, uh, my whole process as uh, as well as make projections for the next one, the next harvest, and um, and then see what's worth it and what's not, and kind of uh, tally up an opportunity cost um, for things like uh, fertilizer and etc. So if you look at the top, uh, all of this right here is money that I made, uh, seventeen thousand for sold vehicles, which was my uh, case tractor that I sold at the very beginning. 5,676 for the initial harvest of the field that you get at just at the beginning of the game that's already ready to harvest. And then 34,361 for the first harvest that I just got. So all that added together uh, gave me a $57,037 uh, 
gross profit, and that is 100% of money earned. Uh, so right here, all these percentages are going to be negatives. And uh, when you add up all the negatives, it's going to leave me with what my net is worth um, based off of a percentage of my total earnings or my total gross earnings. So we spent $900 on seeds, which is 1.5% of this $57,037. Uh, we spent $1,600 on fertilizer, which was 2.8%. Uh, that put together equals our $2,500 cost of goods sold. So cost of goods sold is a, a basic concept that deals with uh, how much money it costs for me to plant uh, before I can harvest. And it costs me in, in terms of uh, product. So I have to buy seeds and I have to buy fertilizer. So those, uh, the, the cost of those equals my cost of goods sold. Uh, and the goods sold being my, the, the plants that I end up selling, which give me this number right here. So basically, to make a harvest, of, uh, to sell a product, I have to buy product. Um, and that's what this is right here. 3,818 is my labor, and that's for wages that I paid to workers while I did other things, and that was 6.7% of what I earned was spent on that. Uh, so my total COGS in labor is 11%, 6,318 dollars. The equipment maintenance for my first day was 3,696, or 6.4% of my uh, gross profit. The equipment for day two went up a little bit, was 3,714, or 6.5%. And because the game rounds, that equals up to, that equals 7,410, or 13% of uh, my gross profit was spent on just equipment costs. I had a minus $2 uh, property cost, that was a dollar a day. And I spent $421 on the first day and the second day on interest. Uh, at 0.7% a piece, that equals about 1.4% total interest, or $842. I bought $14,300 worth of new equipment, which was a whopping 24.5% of my gross profit was spent on new equipment. And so all of these added together equals 22,554, or 39.5% of my gross profit was spent on just operating, operating expense. And that includes my cogs and labor, equipment, etc. So when I subtract all of those things, um, my my actual net profit money that went into my pocket was twenty eight thousand one hundred and sixty five. So out of one hundred percent of my gross profit, fifty seven thousand thirty seven dollars, I got to keep forty nine point four percent as net profit, or twenty eight thousand one hundred and sixty five dollars. So usually in business, uh, what you want to do is you want to you want to work off of percentages um, instead of numbers uh, because you want your the numbers will actually change they'll go up and down based off of based off of things like uh, you know certain companies buying your goods for more uh, money than other companies will or this month they're willing to spend this much money and next month they're not so my sales will be different from month to month but what I want to do is I want to make sure, uh, regardless of my sales, I want to make sure that the percentages of money that I'm spending stays about the same so that my percentage of money that I keep stays the same, if that makes sense. And so I don't ever really want to spend more than, let's say, 13% uh, on equipment costs on this farm uh, per harvest cycle. So. If, uh, if, if I make a certain amount of money, I want to only spend a percentage of that in equipment costs as opposed to a strict number, uh, dollar number. And um, by, by managing the percentages, you can, you can kind of keep your, you can keep your expenses uh, to be in line with your profits so that you can, you can forecast properly how much money you're going to make each time. Now this first PNL is going to be totally different from all my others, um, and and this is this one is kind of harder to predict because uh, this initial harvest is just given to me for free, and that won't happen from here on out. As well as selling a tractor for seventeen thousand um, is is not going to happen in my next harvest or probably my next couple of harvests. So I won't have this money added into my gross profit, and so the money that I make will be closer to this number um, for my different harvests. And so I want to I want to measure 
how well I do in my future harvests um, and in my future P&Ls based off of this smaller number. So the other thing that, that you have to understand about not being able to count on all of this money coming in is that I won't necessarily be spending money on all of this. So I will be paying interest every day. I will be paying equipment costs that I can predict to go steadily up uh, according to this by, by, by it looks like just 0.1%. Um, this might fluctuate depend on how active I get and this is something I can directly control. And this is something that I can forecast easily knowing that for my three fields, I'll spend a certain amount on fertilizer and a certain amount on seed. Now I know that on my next harvest this number will be different because I was given two pallets of seeds and two pallets of fertilizer as well as my cedar was completely full when I got it. So I'll know in the future how much I'm going to spend on each based off of how much I spent this time, but it'll be a different number next time. So with all of this lined up like this, I can, I can basically follow it uh, a little easier than the way that the game gives you where it's, uh, it's kind of all over the place. You have profits here and, and losses there. and um, money you made and money and, and then they separate day by day as opposed to what we want to do is we want to put it together and, and make it make sense per harvest um, and uh, and even though the the number that it shows uh, 43,167 is uh, as my balance is different than this 28,165 it still makes a lot of sense because remember I started the game with $15,000 um, so so that actually does add up um, I'm going to pause the video here and I'm going to bring up another, uh, another little document that where I put together, now that I've seen what it's cost, what it costs me to do everything, I want to kind of do a cost analysis on, on whether or not it's worth it to plow and to fertilize using these numbers that I have just based off of the money that I earned in, uh, in this harvest. Okay. So this is the, this is what I put together about, um, uh, just based off of this harvest on on what it costs um, to actually buy a plow and start plowing what it costs to fertilize and whether or not it's worth it for me to do that whether I get a whether the money that I gain from spending the money doing that is worth it to me so let's look at what I earned uh, on this harvest was thirty four thousand three hundred and sixty one which is a the current harvest total equals one point nine uh, base yield so in other words, my um, even though the game says you know each fertilizing uh, uh, cycle will give you 30% increased yield, so you have to understand that 100% is my base yield, and if I do three fertilization cycles and I plow, then I'll increase it by 100%, so that'll be a total of 200%. And so um, by fertilizing three times but not plowing, I'm basically at times 1.9. Uh, one being the base. Uh, so if we look here, that means that our base is going to be 18,085. If I would have not fertilized and did not uh, plow the field, I would have only made $18,085. That is my base harvest yield. So with a 100% increase instead of the 90, because I didn't plow the field, I would have, instead of 34,361, I would have actually made 36,170. So that's an increase. Uh, it would have been an increase of about $1,800, uh, which isn't bad. So if we look at the, uh, the cost analysis for buying a plow and, and what it would gain me, it would be 10% uh, for plowing would have gained me $1,809 for this harvest. Uh, with a $13,000 cost of the plow, that means I would have to harvest about 7.18 times, or on my eighth harvest, the, uh, the increase in dollars from buying the plow, uh, the increase of dollars from plowing would actually pay for the cost of the plow. So it would basically be um, my eighth harvest would be where I would see money coming back from the cost of buying the plow. However, you only have to plow once every three harvests. So it would basically be, um, it would net me $5,427 per use um, and then on my during my third uh, harvest sorry during my third cycle of using the of using the plow the third time I used it I would start seeing money coming back from it so the plow uh, for 10 percent and the cost uh, it's it's okay um, it's not going to be a make-or-break scenario it's something you definitely don't have to rush into doing 
Uh, but at the same time, it's something that can get you a little bit of money, um, although it's going to take a little longer to, to actually do your thing. And I do apologize about my dog uh, kind of having a cow over here. So looking at fertilizer, uh, there is a 30% increase for fertilizing, and that equals $5,425. Uh, that is 30% um, increase yield per fertilization cycle. So 5,425 times three, since, uh, since we fertilize three times per harvest, gives us $16,275. And with fertilizer costing $1,600, and for the three fields that I have, it costs me 2.5 pallets of fertilizer, that equals $4,000 that it cost me to fertilize. And so the $16,275 that I gained by fertilizing uh, three times uh, minus the $4,000 that I spent on the fertilizer gives me a profit of $12,275 uh, after subtracting the cost of the fertilizer. So I would definitely say that fertilizing is worth the money. Um, a gain of $12,275 is, is a lot of money for the cost. Um, that's actually, for the fertilizer costing $4,000, it actually is an increase by three on what I'm spending. So this is definitely worth it. I would say plowing is worth it if you have the extra cash to spend on a plow and you want to just play the game as realistically as possible. Um, the increased yield is okay, but for sure do not skip out on fertilizing all three stages. Uh, this is, this is the, easiest, the easiest win when it comes to uh, how to make some extra money on your harvest. This is a, this is a definite yes. Don't skip out on it. If you really, really don't want to fertilize, then I would say change your fertilization states to one and just allow your seeder to do the fertilization for you. Um, or do that one pass of fertilizing if you don't, if you no longer use the, the beginning seeder that uh, comes with the game. So uh, the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do some projections for my next harvest and see how much money we're going to spend and how much money we should make. And uh, we'll do that as soon as I pull that up. Okay, so finally I've got the projections for my next harvest, and it looks like um, what I've added in here is the cost of buying two pallets of seeds, uh, two pallets of fertilizer. The labor I went a little heavy on, just in case uh, I want to let them do a little bit more of the work. Um, and then my equipment costs, I did a, a another rough estimate based off of uh, the last couple days and then a small increase in, uh, in uh, equipment costs per day. Finally, my property costs $2, not a big deal and my interest payments um, based off of last time paying 421. So the, my total cost of my next uh, harvest is gonna be $18,344. Uh, and to be honest with you, this should be in either parentheses like this or it should be a negative uh, because it's, it's a subtraction. So I'm gonna spend $18,344 and I'm projected to earn, you know, I'm, I'm just basing uh, a very conservative uh, earnings of $34,000. So I'm projected to, um, to make $15,656. So on top of the uh, running capital that I have of 43165 I can add those two together. It's going to come out to be about um, $58,000 is what I'll have. So... Uh, this is a real simple simple thing that I like to do before I get into anything just so I can see how much money I can spend before I go into my next harvest uh, so that I can account for how much money I'll have, uh, how much money I should keep in the bank. So I could do a bunch of spending and buying right now, but I need to keep at least 18344 in the bank um, so that I don't go under uh, into the red before my harvest is complete. Uh, and then when it's all said and done about how much I'm going to make. So if I wanted to buy about $20,000 worth of equipment right now, I absolutely could because that would still leave me with $23,000 and that's more than the total cost that the harvest is going to cost me. Um, so I've got about a budget of $20,000 that I can spend before we get into the next harvest. Now that budget could be used for buying a plow, for instance, or upgrading a header or something like that. Um, and I'm basically just taking that money from the balance uh, that I have of 43165 and saying, you know, don't go under 18344 So being conservative on my spending, I could spend about twenty-three or sorry, $20,000 
and leave 23000 in the bank, and I'll still be good to go with plenty of cash left over uh, with my profits uh, that I'm projecting for the next uh, harvest, I would still be left with $15,656, uh, still doing some, you know, still doing good things, uh, still making money. And remember, guys, this is on hard, um, and so if I'm, if I'm, if it's pretty much this easy to make money on hard, it should be an absolute breeze on normal and easy. Um, you know, this is not the fast way to make money. This is not the quick way to do things. But it is the uh, it is it is a way to play the game. You know, I don't think the game is necessarily made to be played so that you just earn a whole bunch of cash right up front and buy all the equipment and get into doing everything and, and really not have a goal. I think it's a little funner for me to play the game uh, as someone who is just trying to uh, just trying to slowly build a business and um, and do it in a way that that seems like uh, I guess the the meta of the game for me is is uh, is is running it properly as opposed to just going out and making money any way that I can um, and and you know not really being feasible in real life and which you know none of this might be but um, but doing it in a way that it's just not like going out and buying as much as I can and instead just farming tending to my plot trying to make good decisions on when to hire workers and when to buy equipment and slowly growing to the point where uh, I can do very little work and just earn a lot of money from from my different farms uh, you know kind of just doing their thing uh, eventually get into animals and uh, and and some logging um, I've never been a fan of the silage uh, even though it, it used to make a lot of money it doesn't really anymore uh, it just seems like a lot of work for for very little little uh, entertainment yield you could say so uh, I hope you guys like this video I hope um, I hope it, it 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 gives you insight into uh, into one way that there is to run a farm or at least give you some insight into um, how you can control and manage your costs and project for what you're going to make, uh, make smart buying decisions, uh, etc. This right here, uh, I guess this video for me is the funnest part of the whole thing, is to be able to calculate everything after it's all over. Um, it's obviously, after if you guys have seen my other two videos, it's obviously not the driving portion because I'm terrible at it. Um, but if you found this helpful, uh, go ahead and leave a comment or give me a like or do something. Um, I'm on the Steam forums pretty heavily. Uh, but um, anyway, hopefully I'll make some more videos showing, uh, showing how I'm growing things and, uh, and some of the new purchases I'm making. And, uh, and we can keep doing the, the opportunity costs and the P&Ls at the end of each harvest as well. Um, because I like to do that. That's the fun part for me. So uh, you guys have a great day and thanks for watching.